So it's my pleasure to present the uh, world concert premiere of Glenn Gray's Rag and Roll Guitar, a unique combination of ragtime, bluegrass, country, rockability, and rock and roll music. So w without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to Glenn Gray. Thank you. Sounds like it's on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for showing up tonight. This is, for me, a very unique evening because as long as I should live, as long as I should play, when you play theaters, uh, I'm usually out of town, and of course you're playing, uh, by and large, to strangers. I know everybody in this audience pretty much personally. And uh, as the songs go on, we may, may mention of a few here and there, because as I said, it's, uh, how should I say, uh, neighbors, Bruce and Cindy, uh, family, my sister Sharon is up there at the back, uh, business associates, Ross Flintoff is here somewhere tonight, and so on and so forth. So I'm very happy to play to people I know, a lot of students as well from where I teach, and if you're looking for guitar lessons later on, you can come down a little as music when you talk about that. As Martin had said, I'm going to do an original, or excuse me, a, a two sets. The first is primarily just uh, famous pop songs. If you want to sing along, if you know the lyrics, please feel free. Uh, I have no problem with that. And as Martin has said, if you want to record at all, that's uh, permissible. I don't mind. Get out your cameras, your camcorders, and whatever else. I'd like to start tonight with a Bob Dylan song that goes way back to his uh, beginnings in the protest movement in the early 60s. I get a kick out of how they called him the freewheeling Bob Dylan because when you think of the amount of cars on the road today, those days are long gone. No more freewheeling. So I'm going to start with a song here called uh, Blown in the Wind. Bob Dylan. Oh, thank you so much. This next one is also from an iconic American songwriter who, uh, what should I say, his penchant for hang gliding was the end of him. You know, those are the planes that have no engines and <laughs> you just sort of glide. You won't catch me in one of those. Uh, he passed away some years ago and uh, left us a lot of great songs. This is one of his called The Country Roads, John Denver.
Thank you, John Denver. This next song is, uh, of course, by uh, another well, totally famous musician, uh, George Harrison. I mean, you can't get much more famous than the Beatles now. Of course, I'd like to just say, did you notice what happened at the Oscars not too long ago? I found it was hilarious. Paul McCartney and the drummer from the Foo Fighters show up at some hip-hop performance uh, party afterward, a VIP event. And the, it was a young security guard, must have been. Didn't recognize Paul McCartney. <laughs> Didn't recognize him. The Foo Fighters drummer is trying to say, look, man, this is Paul McCartney, you know? <laughs> you know? Why don't you let him into the show? The guy didn't recognize Paul McCartney. He must have been a young guy listening to rap, I guess, you know? So needless to say, they didn't let him into the show and they had to take up the party somewhere else. But that aside, this one's by George Harrison. And if you didn't know, George was always restricted to two songs on all the Beatles records. And so if you really want to hear some of his great output, I suggest that you get the album called All Things Must Pass from 70 or 71, I'm not sure quite when the year was. And back in the old days when records, it was a three record box set. And so you got all George's stuff that you didn't hear uh, when he was uh, in the Beatles. This one's from the White Album. This one's called My Guitar Gently Weeps. <laughs> Thank you so much, George Harrison. Now this next song here is a bluegrass number and it goes back to, uh, I first heard it from a gentleman named Bill Monroe, I think you may have heard him, sometimes called the godfather of Kentucky bluegrass. I love the way Bill says, I put the drive in with my mandolin. Of course he was a mandolin player, not a guitar player, but this is a song that's been covered in country series it's called Rocky Top, Tennessee.
Chuck, Tennessee. Well, this next, uh, another great iconic songwriter, a man's music I much love, uh, Neil Young, of course. We've all heard of Neil, and uh, we like to claim him as being a Canadian uh, songwriter because, of course, he was born in Toronto and probably grew up in Toronto, as far as I know, but it's fair to say that he spent most of his time in Southern California, where he met Crosby, Stills, and Nash, as history would have it, and uh, we know him for that reason. You know, as, as an Albertan, though, I must say this, I wish he hadn't slagged us so hard over the oil sands. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know why he did that, but I mean, him and who's uh, James Cameron? Who's that other fella? Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't know what it is, you know. As soon as, a, it seems as soon as a musician or an actor has any degree of success, all of a sudden they qualify for a politician, you know. <laughs> and the next thing you know, uh, well, according to these gentlemen, Alberta's the cesspool of the universe, I guess you could say. I don't know what to say about that. I just wish that the musicians and the actors would leave the politics aside and stick to what they do best, that being music or acting. Neil Young wrote this song, as a propelled him to much fame. This is a song, go back to the year he said, and this one's called Heart of Gold. <laughs> Thank you so much. Neil Young, Heart of Gold. This next song is another song that people have mistakenly taken for Bob Dylan's composition. Uh, it's actually a song written by a Texan called Jerry Jeff Walker, who's obviously lesser known, and I'm sure he probably recorded this song first, but uh, Bob Dylan has taken credit for it. This is a, a song called Mr. Bojangles. <laughs>
Thank you, Mr. Bojangle. Well, this next one is uh, by one of, in my estimation, is one of the best uh, finger pickers who ever lived, actually. And a guy by the name of Jerry Reed, who him and Chet Atkins uh, worked together. And uh, Jerry was known as the w Alabama Wild Man. And of course, that's because his playing was very dynamic and so on. This song has been kicking people's uh, you-know-what for the longest time and still kicking mine. This is a song called The Claw. You can still see that Jerry Reed is still kicking my, and you know what? That song is like ridiculously difficult, but whatever, you know, if you shy away from those songs, you know what happens? You never play them. It's like we're back in the band days, you know, set list, you're waiting for the next song, and one guy in the band says, No, I don't know that one well enough, basically, you know. So what happens? You never end up playing it. So I've tried not to shy away from it, but and kudos to Jerry Reed. Like I say, there's Hasn't been a man like him since, I think, you know. The closest I know is a gentleman named Buster B. Jones, who unfortunately passed away in 2009. Check him out on the YouTube and stuff. If you want to see a stellar guitar player, that's Mr. Buster B. Jones. Thank you. Now, uh, speaking of iconic bands, one of my favorite uh, progressive rock bands, if you will, is a band named Kansas. I don't know if, if you've heard of this band or not. Yeah. Yes. They, des they deserve applause. They, their, their music was stellar. They're not known uh, today generally so much. Uh, they were better known in the 70s and the 80s. Uh, known for uh, two songs. Uh, primarily one, uh, Carry On My Wayward Son, which is not a song I think you could do a fingerstyle version of, but you may have heard the riff. <laughs> That's all I can give you on that one. <laughs> I got no more of that one. I'd have to sit down for probably, oh, I don't know, a number of some months to try and do a fingerstyle version of that one. Excuse me. This one here, though, is one that you can do a fingerstyle of, and it's the second best known Kansas song, more of a ballad. This one's called Dust in the Wind.
Thank you. <laughs> always love those songs when you finish with an unresolved chord. People are always waiting for it to go to the one chord. Is he finished? Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe not. You've got to have a few of those in there where you don't end on the intended one for sure. That, of course, dust in the wind. Uh, this next song here again. If you want me to get the cape or on you, this is another George Harrison song, and uh, I like to do Harrison songs. Beatles songs work out very well on the acoustic guitar, and uh, as I said earlier, George didn't get enough do on the Beatles record, so I figure I cover more of his songs. This is the title song from the Abbey, Abbey Road record. This is called "Here Comes the Sun." Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's, of course, George Harrison. Well, uh, who hasn't heard of Elvis? <laughs> Probably going to be the most famous performer from the 20th century, in my estimation. Now, though he didn't write his own material for the most part, uh, certainly famous for his composition. This is one from his Las Vegas Days, a slow song. This one's called I Can't Help Falling in Love.
Oh, thank you, Elvis. If you're wondering what I'm doing every time as I'm staring down, stop on the ground, I'm going to explain that to you. That's a special effects called a digital delay pedal, and if they're not in time, they can be just a bloody nuisance, to be honest with you. So you'll excuse me as I try and tap my tempo. And in the old days, we had to just approximate, and we couldn't use them very precisely, but uh, in this day and age, they're pretty sophisticated. This next one is what I like to call the A minor medley. And I say that because I have three songs that I've thrown together that I think most of you have probably heard before. I try and keep my instrumental songs as popular as possible. There's three songs here. The first is called The Wayfaring Stranger, which is actually a Negro spiritual that probably goes back, well, likely to the 19th century, I imagine. The second song is a song called The House of the Rising Sun. And I must say that a, there could be a number of people here who stand correcting. Everybody, including myself, thought for years that Eric Burden and the Animals wrote House of the Rising Sun because they had a great version in, what, the mid-60s there. And uh, that is not the case. How many have heard of Lead Belly? Oh, there you go, just as I thought. <laughs> Lead Belly was a country folk musician uh, who uh, wrote a lot of great stuff too, but died a long time ago. And he probably wrote this one close to the end of the 19th century, House of the Rising Sun. And uh, the third song is, of course, uh, they're all excerpted, of course, but is by a gentleman named Ma Mason Williams, who uh, was a classical guitarist who uh, had some popular accord in the uh, late 60s. So. This is the A minor medley.
so much. Let's see if you just give me a minute. I'm going to change the guitar here. Now you might wonder why I'm switching guitars, because it's identical to the other guitar, but that's all right. Uh, I'm doing a thing here for those that are guitar players, it's called drop D tuning, which means you take your E string here and you just simply drop it down to D. I don't know what it is with strings, this is the strangest physical thing I've ever seen, but when you have a guitar like in standard tuning like that one is, and you uh, drop your D, that means drop the E to the D, for some strange reason the string can seem to creep up on its own. I mean, without, that is without turning the peg. We need physicists to answer questions like that one. I have no idea how that happens, but just to avoid the problem, this is my drop D guitar. Here's another song by Neil Young. Again, I won't say anything about the oil sands, but other than that, he's just a great songwriter. I don't know uh, how many of you remember, but if we go back to the, I believe it's 1970, there was a thing called the Kent State Riots in Ohio, and uh, Four young students were killed when the state militia was called out to quash the uh, protest against the war. And according to Stephen Stills, Neil Young went out in the woods and came back in about 20 minutes with his song. This one's called Ohio. Thank you, Neil Young, Ohio. Now again, this is another song come from a famous movie uh, called The Wizard of Oz. Who hasn't heard of that one? And it goes all the way back to 1939. And this song was written by a gentleman named Harold Arlen, who wrote a lot of great music, but again, like all of us, we're, we're all eventually forgotten, I guess. But at any rate, this is one by Harold Arlen called Over the Rainbow.
thank you. That's another difficult one. That kicks you almost as hard as Jerry Reed. <laughs> well, I got uh, one more on this guitar for the uh, instrumental set. Another song by Neil Young. I obviously liked his stuff, was influenced by it as a young person. And this is as close as I get to heavy metal, folks, so you better enjoy it while you can. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, it's pretty hard to play metal when you play an acoustic guitar, now, isn't it? But uh, this one's a sort of old song by Neil called Cinnamon Girl. Apologies to Neil, messed up a chord or two, but what are you going to do when you play heavy metal? How did Keith Richards put it? It's, it's all right, it's all rock and roll. Uh, excuse me, folks, just going to change the guitar. We've got a couple more songs left here. This song here is a song that comes from a Broadway musical from 1950 called The Music Man, written by a woman named Meredith Wilson. And of course, I'd never heard of her until I researched the song a little more. When I say research the song, when you play cover songs like this and you do recordings of them, you have to pay before you can record them so that they can distribute the royalties to the appropriate songwriters. So it cost me a little money to record some of these songs. and. Uh, this one goes back, as I say, to uh, 1950, though I first heard, like probably many of us, uh, through the Beatles on the record Beatlemania. This one's called Tiller Was You.
Oh, thank you. Tell her it was you. Folks, I've got just enough time for two songs left here in this set. I thank you so much for coming out tonight. I'd like to uh, do one of my favorite artists, Anne Murray. <laughs> and of course, uh, she's written a lot of great songs to speak seriously, of course, but this is a song that uh, compelled her, or profiled her, I should say, to uh, some fame. This one's called Snowbird. about it for Ann Murray. <laughs> okay. Thank you, folks. I'm going to finish this first set off with a, well, it's the only original song in this set. And it's really not that original, if I may say, because what I've done is I've just thrown together some country riffs from a, one of the famous country players named Albert Lee. He was known for his country chops, and he's played with just about everybody, but... Uh, he does a thing called cascading riffs, as they often refer to them. And so I just took a bunch of riffs I'd worked on cascading riffs and threw them all together. This is a short little thing. It's called The Fly. There it is, all of a minute and 10 seconds, the fly. 
Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for coming out tonight. Uh, we've got just a short intermission here, so uh, get yourself something to drink. Uh, use the washroom. And as Martin had said at the beginning, CDs at backyard prices. Thanks for coming out. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you just shortly for a set of what I call rag and roll and mostly my own stuff, which you won't know but hope you like anyhow. Thank you. <laughs>